Hello and welcome to Meadow Brown Bakery. In this video, I'm going to show you what you need to get started with baking. Before we get started, head over to my website, meadowbrownbakery.com. Sign up if you haven't already done so, and then close the page. Go to the courses website where you'll find a list of courses available to buy on my website. When you find the one that you like, you just click on it and you'll be taken to a sales page where there'll be a video telling you more about the course and there'll be a bit more information down the page about what's involved in the course and then you click buy and follow the buying process. The very first thing I recommend is a scale. You need this to weigh all your ingredients because it gives more accurate results. It can be a digital scale or any scale that's easy for you to read. I don't use cups because they don't give accurate results. I prefer scales so buy a scale and it's very important. There's so many things on the market and sometimes you can feel overwhelmed, but I'll show you a few things that you can use to get started. You need a bowl, large enough to fit your ingredients. This one is a two liter bowl. It should be enough for most cake mixes, but if you need a bigger one, you can always buy a bigger one. Now, when it comes to mixing your ingredients, there are a few options available. I'm going to talk about them individually. If you're not sure if you're really into baking that much, you might just want to start off with as much of the things that you already have at home. So most people have a wooden spoon. This is great to start off with. You can mix a lot of your mixes with this spoon, even creaming butter and sugar. If you look at my earlier videos, I only use a wooden spoon and a bowl because that's what I wanted to do and to show that it's actually possible to bake with just a wooden spoon. You don't need anything fancy. And to cream your butter and sugar, you just have to make sure that it's really soft so that you can mix it easily. Another thing that you could use is a spatula. I, the spatulas are different. There are some that are two piece where you get the handle that detaches from the mixing part. I like these single ones because they're so much easier to clean. I've had the two-piece ones but sometimes they get water in them and they can get moldy very easily. I prefer these single ones and you can use them the same way you would with a wooden spoon. A balloon whisk is very good for breaking up lumps in batter. Sometimes when you have a very runny batter it, it can get lumpy, the flour can be quite lumpy but you use this whisk to break up any lumps. I usually use it for chocolate cake. I've got a very moist chocolate cake recipe, which I use a uh, whisk in, but you can use it for other recipes. The creaming method recipes don't usually need a whisk. You just cream your butter and the sugar and it should be fine. Another thing that you can use is an uh, electric hand whisk. A hand whisk, electric hand whisk, is one that you can buy if you want to, but it's not necessary just to buy it if you're starting out with baking. It usually comes with these whisk attachments and it also has dough hooks. I haven't used my dough hooks because I bake my bread by hand. So I don't even know where the dough hooks are. I tried to look for them earlier on, but I can't find them. Anyway, so you, you use these for cakes, meringues, and most cake mixes. And the dough hooks, you use them if you want to knead bread. But I use my hands. So you can buy a hand whisk if you want, but it's not necessary. But if you can't, for whatever reason, use your hands to cream batter, a hand whisk is very good. And this one lasts quite a long time. I've had one for a very long time, many years that I've had one. And I haven't replaced it yet. That's for mixing your ingredients. I'm going to talk about where you bake your cakes. When it comes to cake tins, there are so many on the market and so many different sizes. It can get really overwhelming. What I recommend are two sizes to start off with. These are the 6 inch round cake tins and 8 inch round cake tins. These are great for baking sandwich cakes. And I usually buy them as a set of two. So I have two of my 8 inch rounds and two of my six inch rounds like this. I'm going to put these to the side. So 
this one the eight inch one i think is the one i use the most it just depends on your family size but you can also use the six inch round tin they come in different heights as you can see i have this one i'm not sure how many inches this is and i don't have my tape measure to measure it but they come in different heights you've got these ones these six inch ones come also in this height so you choose which one you want based on how uh, the cakes that you're going to bake i recommend if you're starting off buy these ones because with the high ones you can buy you can bake shallow cakes in there and you can also bake tall cakes in there so and this tall cakes are great for fruit cakes because with fruit cakes you don't tend to layer them but you want the height so these are great even the eight inch ones come in that height as well this is my eight inch one this is actually quite tall taller than this but you also get eight inches which are the same size as this i use this mainly for fruit cakes but it's a bit too tall so i would get maybe an inch or two lower but it just depends uh how what cakes you really want to bake so i would recommend why i recommend the ones with the tall size is because like i said you can bake shallow cakes and you can also bake tall cakes you don't want to be stuck with many different tin sizes so just buying this one is better because you can fill it halfway you can also fill it all the way to the top this one limits you on the height of the cakes that you need and if you're starting off like i said you don't want too many cake tins i've got loads of cake tins because i bake a lot and often and i bake so many different things but you can easily run out of space and it's not really worth buying everything if you're really not sure how much baking you're going to do so these eight inch and six inch round cakes are the ones i recommend for these ones i buy them in pairs because most cakes that i bake are sandwich cakes so i bake these at the same time i like to do that when i first started baking i only had one cake tin and what i'll do i'll bake one layer wait for it to cook and then take it out of the tin wash the tin and then bake the second one but it's a lot easier if you have two so you just bake two of the same size so if you're using your eight inch or your six inch just bake them at the same time if your oven is big enough and then when you get them out you leave them in your tins for a few minutes and then flip them onto a cooling rack and peel off the paper and then leave them to cool completely when you use your baking tins you don't use them like this because your cakes can stick so what you do is you can butter and flour the tins i might make a separate video about these but you can buy you butter soft butter you spread it at the bottom and the sides of your tin put some flour on top and then shake off any excess flour you can also make a homemade cake release that some people use i've tried using it it worked for me for the first time but it doesn't work anymore but for some people it still works so if you want to try it you can just have equal amounts of plain flour vegetable oil and butter and then you mix them together spread it on your tins bottom and the sides and see if that works for you it might for me it didn't it did work first time but when i tried again it didn't work so i i wouldn't really recommend it but for some people it works the most important thing that i recommend that i always recommend is this and it works best and the no leaves no room for error in most cases and unless it depends on the paper you buy i use baking parchment with this baking parchment sometimes you can find them ready cut i've run out of mine but they come in different sizes so you can actually buy some for your eight inch tin or six inch tin if you don't want to cut them they come in a pack of usually a hundred or so if you don't have that if you can't buy those this is a lot cheaper to do but it can be an annoying process or step you get your baking parchment draw circles uh, use this as a template for your tin and then you cut it out you put butter at the bottom of your tin so soften butter rub it on there and put your baking paper on top you don't have to line the sides it's not necessary unless you're baking fruit cake uh, the sides tend to gently release when they're baked so you don't have to worry about them but you can you can butter and flour them 
if the sides do get stuck for some reason you can always use a spatula or a knife you can use one of these butter knives to gently go around your cake so you go down as deep as you can all the way around your cake that loosens your cakes and then you can flip them over onto a cooling rack and that brings me to cooling racks cooling racks come in different sizes this one is quite a small one it can fit a cake on on there um, but you need something slightly bigger this is one of the smaller ones and i also have quite a big one this one you can fit quite a few cakes and cupcakes on here you can even have cakes on one side and even cookies on the other side so i recommend just buying a big one to start off with because you can use it to add more bakes on there um but if space is limited you can just buy a small one and that's it thanks for watching and see you again soon for more videos like this visit my website www.meadowbrownbakery.com please like and subscribe to my channel